So I always watch these um, videos and uh, postings on Facebook about Kings Park Psychiatric Center. So I thought I'd uh, contribute a little bit. Uh, I was employed at Kings Park Psychiatric Center from 1975 until it closed in 1996. And then after 96, I went on to work at uh, Pilgrim Psychiatric Center. And then um, in my career, I went on to Creedmoor Psychiatric Center, then back to Pilgrim, and then I ended my career at the Queens Children's Psychiatric Center. I started in 75 as a clothing room clerk, which is a grade four in the basement of Building 15. Um, I remember as part of my orientation, uh, the nurse administrator, Mr. Larkin, uh, giving me a tour of the building. And I was a mere 21 years old, scared out of my wits. Uh, the bottom floor, as I recall, were open units, meaning that the door was open, patients could come and go as they pleased during the day. And then as you uh, went up to the other floors, the, uh, the wards were more uh, restrictive. And there was one particular ward that was really bad, housed probably the most ill patients in Kings Park. Um, when I walked up on the unit, um, half the patients were either totally naked, half naked, ripping at their clothes, screaming, yelling, um, sometimes in their own excrement. Um, Mr. Larkin introduced me to the, uh, to the ward manager um, and then uh, proceeded to show me the rest of the building. Um, my office, if you want to call it that, was in the basement um, across the hall from the barbershop. Um, the dining room was down in the basement as well, as well as the occupational uh, therapy room uh, that uh, a gentleman by the name of John Lombardi was the occupational therapist. Um, John was a great guy. He welcomed me and uh, really made me feel at ease. Um, Patients would come down, some of them would do their laundry down there, but basically I'd get new sheets and towels and other linens in, and uh, each ward would bring down um, like a canvas, ba uh, canvas dolly on wheels, and they would have their, um, their requisitions in there of what they needed, everything from soap to bed sheets, towels, um, and it was a type of situation like with towels and sheets because I guess there was so much theft. If a ward brought down 30 towels, you could only give them 30 towels. You couldn't give them 31 towels. Everything was accounted for. Um, so you had to count out the dirty towels. And sometimes some of the uh, therapy aides would bring a patient down with them to do that dirty job because many times the towels and the sheets were soiled and uh, smelled horrendous. And um, you had to put them in these canvas bags and uh, the laundry truck would come up behind building 15, pick up these bags, um, take them to the central laundry, launder them. And then every day I would get a delivery in these huge metal cages um, of sheets and towels and I'd have to count everything. And, uh, I had a storage room with a lot of personal items in it for patients, combs, soap, um, uh, other items, belts, shoes. Um, it was quite well stocked. But the first year I was there, I went on vacation and um, the nurse administrator asked me for the key to that storage room because there was a padlock on it. And um, he was the you know he was the boss, so I gave it to him. Uh, I came back a week later, and that storage room was more or less cleaned out. Um, when I went upstairs to find out what happened, um, the nurse administrator, I believe, he was transferred or he was out ill. So I just went back downstairs. Um, there was a couple of patients that uh, would come down. Uh, one guy was named Charlie. He was from Brooklyn. He was Italian. 
um, real, real street guy. And it was another gentleman who um, was an older gentleman. I used to play checkers with him. <laughs> he used to beat my ass. I'm telling you, this guy, he couldn't remember what day it was. He didn't know what the pre who the president was. But my God, he could play checkers. Um, I, I, I could never beat the guy. It was amazing. Um, he told me, um, he shared a lot of stories of his life about, uh, what it was like to live in the city as a, a, a homeless. Um, I'd ask him questions like, how'd you get a haircut? You know, how'd you get done? He said, so we go to the barber college for barber college for, they give you a haircut for free. And then he'd go to some uh, dental school and get his dental work for free. He'd sleep in the subways. He'd, uh, keep warm, he would stay in the library, the New York uh, City Library, all day to keep warm on a cold winter day. Anyway, um, when I was there, I got to talking to some of the uh, therapy aides, and they said, hey, you know, you want to look into taking the therapy aid test. You know, it's a grade seven. <laughs> I was a grade four. Eh, why not? What the hell? I took the test, and I scored very well on it. I got a letter saying, come in for an interview. I was already working there. So I started um, as a therapy aid trainee. And part of that back then was you did some classroom work and then you had to go onto the wards, onto the units. And they did like a rotation, almost like a medical rotation. Uh, you did some of your rotation in building seven, which was the medical building. You did some of it in the kids unit, in the MR unit. Um, even units um, that were down by the bluff. Um, I remember one particular unit, they called it the hotel. Um, these patients each had their own private rooms, never locked. Each day they went out to a program in St. James called Try, and uh, they spent their day there and they came back at night. And there was really nothing for the therapy aides to do when they were there. You know, a couple of hours worth of work, maybe, you know, getting in, getting in supplies and all that kind of stuff. If a patient was ill, medically ill or whatever, you know, the, the patient stayed back from the program. The staff stayed with them. Anyway, um, and I got promoted to a grade nine, uh, which was a, a therapy aid. And uh, finally assigned to a building, which at that time it was building 21. Well, that was about... 1977. Um, I guess I can get into that in a, in a later video. But um, the hospital was a place where you saw the worst in mankind and humankind. And I guess you saw the best. Uh, you literally saw some patients being very well cared for in terms of employees had a great deal of empathy and you could just tell there was they you know they they were they were kind to them and then you saw other things that uh, were abusive uh you know verbally abusive emotionally abusive and physically abusive um i mean i never saw a patient um get a beating but you know shoved kicked pushed by by staff if they were too slow going down to the dining room or something like that, you know, things that would be, you'd be fired for that today. Um, anyway, uh, to be continued, got a long way to go.